All right, guys, we're here. We're back. Pit Chatter Podcast, episode 28. Man, Noah, you ever think we'd make it to episode 28? I figured about seven, and we was going to be canceled or <laughs> something. Well, after race court last time, we were about canceled, I think. I, good thing I cleared that up you right know, after I said it. Nobody called the NAACP, or as I called it at the banquet, the NCAA. The NCAA. <laughs> Anyways. Don't call uh, them either. Fun, fun times. Uh, I, I'm your host here the Pit Chatter Podcast, Langley Austin, also the promoter here at Franklin County Speedway. The other voice you heard, Noah Henchy. Uh, he's the co-host here. Man, I didn't think you'd make it as long as you have. Man, I had people trying to cancel you after episode one. Why? I don't know. Some people just don't like you, I think. Oh, boo Get over it. <laughs> well, I don't see, like y'all either. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've been here I've been here for every race for the last five years straight. Some people don't like me either, <laughs> so it's okay. Well, look, I, I've had to live with myself for 24 years, and I've noticed nobody is on the fence about me. Yeah. People either love me or they can't stand me. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, last year... There was a point early in the season last year that I was on the can't stand you side. You know, Look, I mean? you know we were we were not getting along. You know, we. That's because it was a bunch of buffoonery. <laughs> that was, I, and I had nothing to do with it, but I got it all. But anyways, we ain't getting into all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Don't bring that one up. Yeah. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. Anyways, uh, man, another. Uh, Another interesting weekend of racing, just not here. We didn't race this past weekend, but yep. around the region, another interesting weekend. A lot of a lot of tracks uh, got canceled, uh, but the car store got theirs in. And uh, man, just read about an hour ago or so before we started recording that uh, the winner of the race, Trayton Lapsovich, uh, he uh, he got disqualified from the race. Uh, hearing that it is a rear end thing, that's not public knowledge yet, so I don't want to you know put everything out there. Uh, ahead of time here, but uh, here it was your rear. Uh, had to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them Canadians showing their rear, I guess. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, a good good race over there this past weekend. Car Store always putting on a good show. Not quite the stock four type show. You know, they're on a big track, North Wilkesboro. You can't do all that beating and banging. No, I need to go down there and catch a race. I've been wanting to since since I opened back up. Oh, you so want to go to North Wilkesboro and catch? Oh a race? yeah, North Wilkesboro. Well, they got this cool thing called Flow. It, oh it'll my say, God. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It'll Somebody save- give me some money so I can <laughs> shut this man up. It'll save you time and money, okay? I'm saying I called a race on Flow Race, and I feel like I am entitled to a free membership. I mean, you know, have you asked them? They uh, might. Who do I talk to? I, I, I probably know, but I ain't letting I'm calling the CEO. Their, I'm What's, not giving you their number. So. I'm calling the CEO of Flow Race. Yeah. You probably have to call Matt Dillner. I mean, that would be who I would, who I would suggest. But, you know, anyways. I'll call him, too. Yeah, well... I mean, you call me all the time. Say, so, I'm one know. of your most esteemed announcers on Flow Racing, yeah. and I can't even get a membership here? Uh, non-racing related, before we bring in our guest here. Non-racing related. How's your, uh, how's your NCAA career going? Uh, Kennesaw State, national champions, baby. Kennesaw Let's State. go. It took me six years. took a long time. Yeah. Well, I, I finally started, a, I don't, what is it called, a dynasty or Dynasty, whatever. yeah. Yeah, I finally started one the other day. Got Appalachian State. I took them to play in the playoffs against number one ranked Notre Dame, and uh, you know I was doing good until about the second half started, and my team stopped playing. That's usually that's usually how it works. Yeah. Most of the time, I only make it through like the first quarter, and I'm like, "All right, we can do this." And then yeah. just, <laughs> go, I throw six interceptions, it goes downhill. Fast. That's, that's what happened to me in the second half. It was it was bad. It was bad, really bad. Uh, but I mean, you know, take Appalachian State to that close. I mean, I'm I'm proud of my Did team. Did you download my team? I told you. I, I don't. I don't even know how to do all that. Everybody man. go on Team Builder. Look up N. Hinchy 20. Yeah. The Roanoke Stars, baby. Roanoke Stars. I even stars. got Jordan to draw me up a logo, make it look professional. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you had her do it because if you'd have drawn it up, it would have been oh, bad. Oh, it would have been terrible. It would have looked like MS Paint from like 1999 Stick or something. Stick figures and stuff. Yeah, yeah some, something, like that. something like that. Something like that. Anyways, anything else uh, Anything else you had uh happened over the weekend or last week or so since we've been since the last time we recorded i know nope, you always not really I went mean, golfing you, you golfing you, you you're not very good at golf are you does anybody go to be good at golf i mean well i i don't really know i, I go to I have go. an excuse to day drink with the boys listen i went bowling okay for the first time like a week ago or two weeks ago 
I used to be, and this is not this is great. I used to be an average 160, 170, 180, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. I, every time I go bowling, that's not bad. The other day, I couldn't crack a hundred. Okay, <laughs> the first game, I don't think I cracked fifty. It was so horrible, man. Last but time, I hadn't done it in twenty some years. Last time I went bowling, I talked so much crap to my buddy. Yeah, because his girlfriend was in from out of town. I bowled a strike, first one. I was like, oh, <laughs> you get clapped. Dude, I bowled like a 72. Was, <laughs> that was the only highlight of the night. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's, that's rough right there. That's rough. Yeah, I, I've got to start going bowling more often because I feel terrible about how bad it I was, okay? Maybe you can do that next in the off season. You could be a bowling promoter. Start a league up. I, I, no, I would. I, like, you know, there are some things like, <clears throat> and i got to be careful how I say this. Um, I was about to say, you know, race promoting is not fun, but it is at times. There are, there are instances in which, you know, running this place or any other racetrack is, is a good time. Um, but I, I would rather just, you know, bowl for fun and not be a bowling promoter. Look, them okay. old dudes take them leads. Oh, yeah, listen, very I serious. know. We, were, we got there late in the evening, and they hadn't got there yet, so they all start coming in. You know, they got their bags, and, you know, they're carrying everything in. The, the way they walk in is like when you see uh, before – games on sunday nfl games where they yeah. show the guys yeah. walking into the stadium that's how they look that's how they walk into the lehigh lanes and i mean I, whatever i guess i mean i listen i guess if you're as good as they are you can do that uh, if you have, i'm sure they got a you know we were right by the door you know where we were bowling so every time i went to bowl i'm sure they got a real good laugh yeah i'm sure i mean junior out bowled me for a little while okay well, I mean, it probably wouldn't be hard. It was not the other day, for sure, for sure. I mean, I'll, I'll go up against you, though. I don't mind. We might have to put some money on this, maybe live stream it. I'm, I'm game. Get some bets going. I, well, I don't know about the live streaming part. <laughs> no, we're going to live stream it. I don't know about that. All or nothing. Can we put the rails down the gutters <laughs> when we do it? Sure. <laughs> and if you can bounce it off the rail and get a strike, it's double points. I'm in. Okay. I it's, think I it's could gonna do be that. a freestyle competition. I, th- I think I could do that. That would All be right. good. Sold. Anyways, enough of that nonsense. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, before we get into our guest today, who is uh, David Duncan Jr. Before we get into that, um, got uh, race coming up this weekend. Hopefully, uh, not looking too good. Old, uh, old Deborah, little Debbie. Debbie. Uh, she's uh, she's bringing the honey buns and a lot of rain. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm so, hoping we, you know, maybe it takes a turn at the last second, but it's not yeah. looking very good. I told somebody earlier, you know, about 24 hours from now, I'll have a pretty clear picture of what Saturday and Friday, Saturday is going to look like. I'd say the based on every forecast I've seen, Friday practice is probably not happening. Yeah, probably not. Um, but I'm still hopeful that Saturday we can, you know, maybe have early practice for the people who want to get some practice in ahead of time and, uh, you know, maybe get the race in. You never know. It's the Buster Carroll Memorial, so uh, you know we're hoping hoping for a decent uh, decent turnout. Everybody I've talked to, you know, last race we talked about it. Good car counts. Uh, you know, we had 14, 15 mini stocks last time. Uh, feel like we're going to be in that same neighborhood with those. You know, again this race, um, legends look like they're going to be in the 10 to 15 range. Stock fours always 10, 12. Late models look to be in the 8 to 11 range. I, it, it's promising. So I hope so. The only thing not promising is the weather. Yep. Debbie. Yeah, of course. Debbie is going to decide, you know, Debbie, you know, back and you, you guys won't, probably won't understand this reference, but, you know, Debbie does a lot of things. And, uh, <laughs> and she, hopefully she does not screw us. Okay. <laughs> if you get the reference, you get the reference. If you don't, we are not explaining that. I okay. forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> Deborah. Yeah. Yeah. Good old. Come on, Deborah. Good old Debbie and good old Dallas. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's jump. <laughs> oh, God. Let's, let's jump over here and talk to David Duncan, Jr., uh, David, you and I have known each other for ever. Yep. I mean, Ever since at, we least, kids. at least 30, 32 or 33 years that I can think of, okay? Yep. And probably longer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and get this one out of the way ahead of time. I beat you three times in a bike race. <laughs> just, just so everybody knows. I mean, and you, you were did. a leader off of turn four, and I passed you every time coming every to time. the track. Every so. time. 
I tell Coming you what, these, before. these boys was talking before this bike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And apparently back in the day, bike racing it was, serious. was a serious division. Well, when we were racing, though, there was 30 or 40 yes. of them yes. kids out there. I yeah. mean, it wasn't no, it wasn't like it is today where you got three one week and seven yeah. the next. I mean, it was 30 or 40. Was, I mean, they were lined we were up so stacked, tight. Yes, yeah, You just about hit each shirts. other's uh, wheels. I mean, not wheels, but... Uh, Pedals. Pedals. The there pedals. we go. I yep. couldn't think of the Y'all word. doing parade yeah. laps? And I, I, <laughs> we should have, okay? We should have. I mean, now, I, I, granted, Grayson and and, uh, and Junior, they over here doing donuts and stuff after races. We didn't we didn't think all that back then. But, uh, David, you were you were telling a story beforehand about uh, me showing up with a 10-speed bike uh, back yeah. then and your dad buying you one. And I remember that 10-speed bike, my dad had bought it for me. And Frankie Kelly, who raced here, and you, you remember Frankie, mm-hmm. but yeah. a lot of people listening might not. He raced here in the pure stocks and eventually late models and stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, he put it together for me and told me, don't lose. And I didn't <laughs> those three races. So. Yeah. Put it together? What do you mean? Well, you know. It's a bike. Well, yeah. He was cheating in the bike race? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, they don't was, all come assembled, okay? He was treating yeah. your now, now I guess they do. I guess they all come assembled now. Yeah, but back, back in the day, they didn't have all that. Yeah. I've never heard of a bike coming unassembled. Well, I mean, you, you were also, you, what year were you born? 99. See, I was born in 82, okay? Yeah. I thought Things you were just, a little different back you then. You just went to Walmart, and you rode the bike in the store, and then took it home. No, nah, that's new <laughs> stuff, bud. That's, that's, that's new. That's how it's worked for me. That is yeah, new. Yeah, for sure. So tell, tell, us, tell us that story. So you had gotten a 10-speed bike. Yep. So what we did have was just regular old bikes to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And then once you got a 10-speed, then my dad had to get me a 10-speed, and then... My dad didn't go buy me a brand new one. We went to a yard sale and got one that <laughs> looked like <laughs> looked like an old girl bike, but it was a ten speed and I could pedal. So uh, I remember mine. Mine was bright yellow and black, and all the rest of the people out here had just like plain colored bikes. So I yeah. was I was a superstar. I thought in my yeah. mind that you know whatever what was that ten nine ten eleven years old. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So those, were, those were good times back then. Y'all are was. prime examples of why the cost of racing keeps going up. Oh, listen, 100%. <laughs> back in the day in the bike race. Listen, everything. Y'all are out here buying new bikes. Everything in racing is monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. So, so I get the 10-speed, they got to have the 10-speed, yep. okay? If, if, I'd have put a, if I'd have put a teddy bear on the front of there, they'd have put one on there, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it is. And then somebody finds a uh, bicycle hey. slick somewhere, shows <laughs> up with them. And definitely if you win, they're going to be like, yep, need to put a bear on the front. Made them faster. Hundred percent. Aerodynamics. It's it's amazing yep. that that uh, that translates in in all levels of and racing. everything. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It does. Uh, well, you you moved on to car racing. Mm-hmm. I moved on to. I don't even know what I moved on to in the meantime. In 1999, you said you started racing in 1999. I'm trying to think yep. of what I was doing. Oh, in 1999, I had started my first newspaper about racing at mm-hmm. the Stock Car Racing Journal. So we were yep. we were along the same path. We just didn't go down the same road. Yeah. So yeah. t- tell us tell us about uh, getting started. Um, yeah, I believe you started in the rookie division. G- give yeah. us g- run us down the road of how you got started. So my dad raced for years. He started off a rookie and then went to mini stock. Well, I used to watch him and be like, I listen to it, hit the gas, and where he's letting off and everything. Yeah, you know, for years. Yeah. So I used to tell my dad, "Let me drive your car," and he'd be like, "Nah, huh, nah, huh." huh. Now you're going to put it in a wall totally. Yeah. And I'd be like, no, I'm not. So, built me a car. Yeah. My parents was like, when you graduate, you can race. So, 99 is when I graduated. Yep. So, when I went to my first race, I put it in a wall in turn four. <laughs> 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 Just like my dad said I would do. Yeah, yeah. So, we ended up putting the car back together. And then we come down here on practice. And my dad got in the car with me and showed me what line to run and, you know, the gas and everything. And, you know, because back then we didn't have radios. Yeah. So he would just get in the car with me and right. tell me, you know, go here, go there, go, you know. Yeah. But he's really the one that taught me how to drive. Yeah. I thought I did from watching him. Yeah. But getting in the car and having him explain everything to me, that's what made me start doing good from that point forward you know it's it's funny that now i didn't have i didn't i didn't put myself in the wall i did a different way but (laughs) not the same you know my dad ran the racetrack so yeah i'm watching well that's easy yeah i can do that you know what i mean it's amazing how much you know 
Until you get to that point, and you go, well, damn, I don't know anything. Exactly. I didn't know anything about what I was talking about. No. Nope. Kind of like, you know, and I'm sure it was the same for you. You were probably sitting in the stands a few years back, and you were like, man, this racing, that looks easy. It looks so easy. Yeah. It you're does like, from the stands. ain't that good. I'll yeah. go down here and spank them. And then yeah. you show up, and you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> you're the one that didn't turn out like that. <laughs> uh, these guys are pretty good, as it seems. Yeah, it's a whole uh, it's a whole different and I think that's anything in life. You know, you yeah. you know, you go I, people, you know, I guess all the time, you know, I'll see I'll go into somebody's business and I go, "Well, damn, I could do better than that." Yeah. And then I start thinking, "Could I do better than that?" Uh, <laughs> uh, probably not. But you think you can. Yeah. In your mind, well, I can make this two these two tweaks. I'm sure it's the same thing with the race car. Yep. I can make these two tweaks of how he's driving and he's driving it, you know, poorly. I'm going to do this. Yep. And it's going to be better and it's not. So all right, you got so you got in the wall the first time. Yeah, Just take us through what happened after. So that. after that, you know, my dad, like I said, we come down here on yep. practice days. He got you dialed in. Yes, he had me drive the car. When it started getting dark, I pulled in, and he was like, "What are you doing?" And I said, "It's getting dark, Dad." And he said, "Nah, go back out there on the track." Whitey said, "We're not going to turn the lights on, but you can run as long as you want to, right?" Yeah. So he had me drive. Until, you know, he told me to come in. Yeah. And that was so, instead of seeing track, I would know the track by feel. Yeah, sure, sure. And it really worked. Like, that was like a big thing in my driving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Hmm. So, uh, how, how long did you run the rookie, and did you have any success in that? I ran the rookie class until, I think, 2002. I'm pretty sure. And then... My dad let me drive his mini stop, and I'd never driven a car before. Yeah. But he told me, he said, if you wreck it, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> he was like, I'm not playing. <laughs> and I begged him, begged him, begged him to let me drive the car. So I start dead last. I start getting the feel of the car, and I'm like, man, this thing feels good. Yeah. Well, I'm looking up at the flag stand. I see third. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I might have a chance to get second, right? Yeah. I was flying. I was on a rail that night. When I got to the leader, they was getting ready to throw the white flag. And when I came out of four right here, me and the guy that, I can't remember who it was, but I got to him. Yeah. He came down, you know, he got a little swirly. Yeah. And got to my front end, and I turned him. Yeah. And, but I ended up winning my first race. So... That's how I got my first race in mini stock, and that's how I ended up moving up. My so, dad so, seemed so to your drive. first race in mini stock, you got to win. Yeah, first wow. time I drove. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> that sounds like Noah in the Crown Vic, although his career didn't quite <laughs> end the same way. It ended in grace and a championship. That's how it ended. It ended up in turn two with stuff flying into the grandstands and a trophy in my hand. Uh, no, that was not that day. <laughs> and a cup. Not that day. <laughs> Not that day, but it was locked up by then. <laughs> oh, man. So, so if you win your first race in mini stock, where the hell do you go from there? I mean, it, it's all downhill from there because you're not going to win every race. No, it's not. It was – that was like – the most meaningful one to me. Yeah. You know, because I had tried for – Had you, you won know, in rookie at all? I had won like – I think like three races – but I come in top three a lot. Yeah, you yeah. know, second, third. Yeah, but I just didn't win a whole bunch. I got you know, you. like other I got people. You. So, so basically, let me, let me ask. So basically, did moving up to mini stock? He's like, well, damn, this is easy. Yes. It, <laughs> but just no like, wall in turn four that time. Yeah. But the the mini stocks, like back then, I mean, back like when my dad was driving, it was legends. You know, Steve Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tommy Dean. Yes, Tommy Chip Dean. Chip Bruner. Uh, uh, Jimmy Cox. Jimmy Cox. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Chris Martin. Chris Martin. Drove a yep. Chevrolet. The, the Vega, yep. 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 James Hunt. You, you I know, mean, there was some really good drivers absolutely. back in that, them days. Absolutely. And and we're probably missing half of them because I guess Sonny Arrington would have been racing back then still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that, was, that was a good era. So, w like... A lot of them drivers, you know, kind of like just moved oh, yeah. on or whatever. Sure. And now the new group that's come in, people's done figured out, I feel like, that mini stock is where it's going to be at. Yeah. You know, like you get a late model, you're going to spend a whole lot more money. Oh, yeah, sure. But you can get a mini stock and you can be competitive, you know, and 
they got tours where they're going, you oh, yeah. know, to different tracks all on the East Coast. Yep. So, I mean, it, it's moved up a lot. And we got the caliber of drivers that there is now Yeah. is unreal. Like, any driver could win on a, on a, any race night. Yeah, I would agree because with Because everyone's – it's just who's handling for real. Like, you can see who's getting through the corner. Yeah. That's who's winning. Yeah. And if you're not – it don't matter how much horsepower you got. If you can't get through the corner, it don't matter. Yeah. So, so you won your first mini stock race, okay? Mm-hmm. 2005, right? Yep. Um, man, 2006, 2007, you kind of disappeared from here. Where'd you go? Yeah. Two, well, 2007, I ended up going to jail for three years. So got out in 2010, was doing good. We started um, running Hogan's cars yep. that my dad had bought. Yep. So me and my dad, we have a, a ball, you know, yep. when he got the, the two cars from Hogan. Mm-hmm. And the first race that I drove that time, I won. I was driving uh, my dad's Pinto. Yeah. And I drove that thing a lot back then. Yeah, yeah. And we, we had a really good time back in 2010. That was like yeah. my favorite year because me and my dad got to race together. Yeah. Because, like, back when he, he was letting me drive, you know, when I first started driving mini stock, he didn't have a second car put together for me to go racing a mini sure. stock. So yeah. it was either me drive or him drive. Right. And, like, in 2011, he kind of, like, started stepping back a little bit yeah. and just letting me drive. And sometimes back then he used to tell me, he'd be like, son, you should let me drive. And I'd be like... Oh, Dad, you, you know, you, you can drive. you got plenty of time. Yeah. And I look back now to where, you know, he's it, – it, it'd be hard for him to be able to race. Sure. And I'm like, man, I should have let him drive a whole lot more back then yeah. instead of being greedy and wanting to drive every race. Yeah, but he probably really enjoyed watching He did. He, he says that. He's like, son, I had just as much enjoyment as racing as yeah. I did watching you race. I mean, you can tell when you see him, he is – he genuinely is into – yeah. I mean, he can be on the outside of the fence, sitting yeah. outside, and he is as into what you're doing yeah. as he what probably was day one when you started, yeah. or, or when he was racing himself. He's always believed in me. Like he he ain't ever gave up on me. Even when a couple of years ago, I was like, man, I I can't win. Yeah. Like there's no reason for me to keep racing. Yeah. And. Dad was like, nah, he's, you know, son, you just need to go practice, work on the car. Instead of going racing, just go practice, get the car right. Sure. And Daryl Dalton ended up getting hooked up with me. Yeah. And built me a motor. And I, he messaged me and was like, let me build you a motor. And I was like, I ain't got the money to, you know, to get a brand new motor built. Yeah. And he was like, nah, I, I don't want you, I'm not asking for your money. Let me build you a motor. And right. man, he he built me a motor and got me back to where I'm at now. Yeah. I mean, handling has been an issue with me. Like the car ain't ever really been perfect. I don't feel sure. like. But horsepower wise, now I got the horsepower. Yeah. It's there. It's just getting the. I I don't know why, but the car just no matter what I I can change the spring struts change rear shocks and it just seems like it it's pushing entering and it don't want to get through mid-turn so Mm -hmm. on the nights that it runs better you know i can get up front more yeah but when it's not you know you you can see like this last race yeah it it just wasn't doing that good a couple races ago man i mean every restart i mean you were right there with them after a few laps it seemed like maybe the car handling went away or whatever it was but man every restart you were right with them and see i changed i changed a lot of stuff on it from that race yeah to try to make it better because i was like well we can put this stuff on it and you know we'll figure it out yeah nah it went the wrong direction Right, right so we we're going back to what we had on it before, yeah, and going to get the car scaled out, all that yeah. good stuff. So that way, when we come up here, we we should be pretty close to where we need to be at. Before we get too much into today, you, you, I mentioned two thousand six, two thousand seven a minute mm-hmm. ago. I believe you went dirt racing. Tell us tell us a little bit about your experience going dirt racing. Yeah, two thousand six, two thousand seven, I went 
the uh, Oak Level Speedway. Yep. And 311. 311 in Madison. Yep. yep. Got me a dirt car. Ran dirt for a while. So you did a different car. You didn't just take the car from here no, and convert it over. No, no. I went and bought a uh, Pinto, dirt Pinto. Yep. And started off at Oak Level and then started going to 311. And back then, Oak Level would run on Friday. Yep. Right? And then on Saturday, 311 would run. Yep. So I'd run Friday at 311, change the gear, go to uh, – yeah. 311 on Saturday. Yeah. And I, I really liked it. And it made, it turned me into a better driver. Oh, I'm sure. From yeah. driving this to driving on dirt, I was, you know, I was lost for real. Yeah. And yeah. I'd been driving asphalt for years. So when I got on dirt, I was like, it's going to be easy. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> it's not. It, it's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, you have to uh, have a set of skills or develop a set of skills on dirt because those cars, are, they don't handle anything like no, they do here. Totally different. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, over the course of uh, over the course of your career, man, you've uh, experienced a lot of different things here. You mentioned 2011; that was the year Buck Wild uh, yep. took place. Yep. Uh, Noah, he he's got quotes from the show. <laughs> he quotes you. He quotes you know a little bit of everybody on there. <laughs> something about getting a road on the show or something. But anyways, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's his road favorite. on the show. <laughs> that's his favorite. I believe that's a spider <laughs> reference there. Um, what what was what was it like during that show? Because. You know, some people might think that it was scripted, and it, and it definitely no, was not. it definitely but, but wasn't. But tell us about the experience of, of being on that. Man, I'm going to be honest with you. That was, like, during that time, that was, like, the funnest time of my racing career, for yeah. real. Just the experience itself, I mean, we couldn't wait until the show came out. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? But, like, it got to be... Like, he didn't really didn't want, like, hard racing. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, we ended up getting kicked out that summer. Well, it seemed like they, like, transitioned. The, at the beginning of that year. It was really man, good. Everybody's it, amazing. and banging, and they're amazing. having a good time, yes. and Especially there's all kinds of chaos yes. on the pits. Yes. yes. And the mini stocks, Kevin Smith, those and all that. Awesome. Yes. That was some great stuff. You and Jonathan Hall. Yes. Um, but it seemed like as the show progressed, they it just, and I think you just said it, they just kind of, Wanted to clean her racing or something. I'm not yeah, really sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, they, if they would have left it the way it was, there's no telling what this track would be today. I agree with Honestly. that. Honestly. I agree. I mean, some things don't need to change. Yeah. And that, that was one of them. Yeah. And you, you could see how the people was here. They was in the stands. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then midsummer, you know, it's you see the stands start – emptying out yeah. you know what i mean just because it wasn't fun no more because yeah. you couldn't you really couldn't race like you can today yeah you know what i mean so so what'd you get kicked out for um i got into a wreck with jonathan hall yeah well he he had gotten into my the side of me you know just hard racing sure i didn't run radios yeah jonathan was on the inside he turned me, and somebody had spun me early in, in the same race. I, I'm pretty sure that some – or, no, the race before someone had spun me. Yeah. So when that race came, and he spun me, and they was – you know, the flagman was like, "Yeah, we're, we're not doing anything. And I'm like, well, if I touch somebody, y'all going to put me, in, you know, to the rear yeah. or – kick me out for a week or whatever yeah and they was just like no 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 so i got mad and ended up driving over top of jonathan hall's car on a back stretch <laughs> <laughs> throwing a hissy fit yeah getting really buck wild yeah and you're trying yeah. to live up to the name yeah yeah if, and did you feel like that there was and i'm not trying to throw them under the bus when i asked this you know at the time jonathan he was kind of new in racing he'd run you cars a little bit and then moved up to mini stock but John, I believe, was the tech man. Mm -hmm. You know, Sheila was the scorer. Yeah. It was just a lot of involvement right there. Did you feel yeah. like that was being one-sided biased? A, a little. Yeah. But I, me and Jonathan, yeah. me and John, you know, we, 
we all get along. Yeah, sure. And I apologized to him about that because I shouldn't act that way. Like I said, I right. threw a hissy fit. Right. And right. ended up tearing up two cars for right. no reason. Right. When we could have just, you know, went home, beat the den out, and that would have been it. But we ended up getting kicked out for a few weeks. We was kicked out for the, the season. Yeah. And then we ended up coming back. And I ended up winning the championship, the Buck Wild championship at the end of the season. Okay. And Jonathan won the the one for the season. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Yep. All right. That make that makes sense. One yep. of my favorite quotes from that was Jonathan Hall screaming about how everybody preaches forward down here, but they're mad because he came down here in the Toyota and whooped. Oh them. yeah. And yeah. then shortly <laughs> after. He's in a Ford. <laughs> That's all he runs now is, is Ford. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. A- after after the Buck Wild years, um, you uh, you you were gone for a few years. Tell, yeah. tell us tell us what happened there. Well, I had gotten into using drugs real bad. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I wasn't really messing with racing because I, I was into that. You yeah. know, and I ended up going to prison for five years over it and ended up getting clean, turning my life around. You know, like I I want people to know that no matter no matter what you got going on today, you can always change. And it, there's always a brighter future yeah. ahead. You you just got to try. You know what I mean? And it it was hard for me, honestly. But now it's easy. You yeah. know, and I got a, a family now. I got a son. He's right. nine months old. He's my world. You know, like it made me into the man I am today, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, you know, I remember you It kind of went on the wrong path. You yeah. Know, we, 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 we could see it. I wouldn't yeah. even hear oh, yeah. all the time, but I, oh, my I goodness. could see it. I'd you know gotten I mean? down to 140 pounds. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, that goes to tell you how bad I was. Yeah. 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 But you know, I mean that that I mean you're 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 hundred percent right. No matter what you're going through in life, you can always overcome it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Did, do you do you feel like you, you said it was hard then and it and it was easy now. You know, is it easier because of the because of the family? Is it easy what what oh, makes yeah. it easier now? I it's just like getting out of that that bubble. Yeah. You know. And really it was I had to change my people, places, things. Yeah. You know, like I couldn't go around the people I used to because they, how, how am I supposed to stay clean if I'm going around someone that's, that's using, you know what I mean? So I just really had to give up all my friends from back then and just concentrate it on my family, Yeah, you know, and taking care of my mom and dad, my girl, you know, like they just, they make it easy for me. Right. They do. Right. And I got good people. And like Daryl Dalton, he's, I, I, I can't say enough good stuff about that man. He would do anything in this world for me, for real. Yeah. He, and, and he would do that for anyone, I feel like. But he's, he's a really good man. He yeah, is. Yeah, Daryl's a good and guy. And I'm so thankful that he sent me that message on Facebook because I probably wouldn't be here right now. Right, right. You, uh, you, you, you got out of jail about 2019, I believe. Yep. When when did you come back racing? I I came back 2019, and the car that I was actually running back then, it had been sitting, you know, for five years, just sitting out in the yard. Right. So when I got out, I ended up rebuilding the car from top to bottom, you know. Yeah. Replacing everything, checking everything, and then going out then. And building a car, you know, me me doing everything and it sure. coming out of my pocket. Where it used to be my dad, you know, paying for everything back then. Right. I, I just didn't have the money to, you know, to get motors and stuff like he did for me. Yeah. And just doing it myself, it's been a little bit harder. You know what I mean? But it means more to me. And, like, I've... I'm sure everyone can see that I've changed my driving style because I used to be a real hard, you know, competitive driver. If you go every back single to Buck Wild, I mean, you, yeah, you were exactly. very aggressive. And now I'm like, man, I don't want to tear this car up. Sure. And I know other people don't either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Daryl's like, no, you need to drive that thing in the corner. 
Yeah. So, yeah. W- look, when Daryl's in my ear, if you look at the times, he can pick me up two tenths. Yeah, yeah. Just being in my ear. Yeah. A, a good spotter, man, can yes. make a, a yes, world of a difference good, and just having a spotter you along, yes. you know, yeah. get, knowing what to say to you to get you there. Yeah. You know? And um, he does. You, you mentioned that, you know, you don't want to tear the car up. You, you know, Buck Wild Air, you were battling for wins. Yeah, you, every week. You haven't battled for wins recently. No. Uh, much. No. Um, it, do you think that that mindset plays into that at all, or is it just circumstance? I feel like the caliber of cars that there is yeah. now to back then you know, is way, way better. Well, the division's evolved. Right? Yes, yeah, and it, it's totally different cars to, from yeah. what we was running in. Yeah. But, I mean, I feel like if I could, if I could get my car to get through the corners, you know, like these other guys, I'd, yeah. I'd be fighting for the win, right. no problem. Right. We know that. But it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm having a hard hard time with it what what do you think it's going to take for you to get your car to where it's handling that good <laughs> I, I don't know we're we're trying some new shocks and springs and stuff going to scale the car out try to come practice on friday if we can really what i need is some practice yeah. and you know like last year you see me every week oh yeah if not twice mm-hmm. and you know, like this year, I don't think I've came and practice once. And not, not very often for yeah, sure. Yeah, because I'm just, if if I'm not, you know, at my parents' house taking care of him or at the garage working on a car, I'm at home with my son. Yeah. So he, I love spending time with him. And it's just, I know I need to be here, but you know where he's young and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I really well, you'll never get wanna, that time back. Exactly. And I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss no first yeah. because I was at the track. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think um, I, I, I need to plan out, you know, like yeah. from the practice, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I know sometimes you've messaged me and you've like, hey, man, can I practice such and such time? And then you yeah. know, you'll end and up doing something else. And then the race you know? starts at 7 o'clock, and I'm here at 7.15 <laughs> coming in the pit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and that plays a role in, in... It does. You know, if you don't get practice, you know, you yes. don't get practice on practice days, you don't get practice on race days, you don't yeah. get to qualify, it, it's hard to win. You have to put the work in. Yeah. And the guys that's running up front, they just ain't throwing a car together and winning. Right. These guys are working on the car seven days a week making sure that thing is yeah. ready to go. Yeah. That's, that's why they can get out front, you know, and, and leave the other guys that don't. Yeah. You've, uh, you've mainly raced just in, in many stocks over the yep. years. You, you mentioned the rookie division, but mm-hmm. what, what, what's kept you from, you know, going late model racing or going racing in something else? Mini stock, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be – the wave of the future, for real, like how late models are. Yeah, I, I, I think you give it another five years, I, we'll be at. We're already at Bristol, you know. Yeah, I think we'll we'll end up having a race at Martinsville. Right. Yeah, uh, Clay, Clay Campbell's pretty against that, but but I think eventually heard that's that. going to happen. Yeah, you know, I, I, the limiteds did that to y'all. Okay, when mm-hmm. they had the limited race, I yeah. believe that was going to open a lot of doors. Um, for like the lower divisions, mm-hmm. um, the support divisions to get a chance to go to Martinsville, and that race went stupid chaotic in 2009. I was there; it was Man. great. I mean, it was great entertainment for me. I I yeah. didn't have to run the show. <laughs> Clay Campbell did not feel that way. <clears throat> yeah. So I think that's hurt. Uh, you know that all the divisions from getting a chance to race. I mean, who wouldn't love to see a mini stock race there or a stock yes. four race there? Yes. Crown oh Vicks goodness. racing there. I mean, yes. that would be incredible, man. I mean, they go to Martin, uh, Bristol, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I think that'd be great. I feel like it's a, I, I'm obligated to ask this question now. Do you ever see yourself jumping in stock four, maybe a race or two, trying it out, going out there and beating the I would with love, them boys? I would love to, but I just don't feel like it would be fair to them. You know what I mean? Just because 
I'm an experienced driver, and a lot of yeah. them guys ain't. You know, know. today stock fours are pretty experienced. Yeah. Well, I think as much as you know, we hate on you know who. He has. <laughs> oh God, here he we has go. very West much again. progressed the division. He, oh, he kind of sure. made everybody get way better, way faster. Yeah. I, I than if agree. he wasn't here and it just kind of progressed on its own. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, yeah. Do you have any aspirations of racing anything else, or do you just love the mini stocks? I don't. I really love mini stocks, and I got me a tube chassis car now. Yeah. So, like, I want to get a late model. Yeah. You know, in the future, but it's just like right now. I love this. Yeah. I. I mean, I feel like it's more exciting in mini stock than in the other divisions. And just right. because I'd be racing against money, you know what I mean? Like, sure, sure. they got twenty, twenty-five thousand dollar motors. Yeah. And that's now just more unreal. That yeah. You're, you're outdated. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, they're more than that now. Uh, wow. For sure. Um, yeah. But you look at Jonathan. He went to late model. Look how good he done. He did. He did a great and job. Look, I think the mini stocks prepare you. Yes, for that. they do. They do. Um, I, I really do. You, you, uh, you know, you've you've went through. You mentioned, you know, when you when you started racing, when your dad was racing, mm-hmm. um, the mini stock drivers, the the level of guys. Oh my goodness! Who, who, who stand out of who you learned the most from over the years? Probably I mean, I there's a lot of them. Jimmy Cox was a good one. Jimmy Cox. Yeah. He really he really taught me and my dad everything when it came to a mini stop. Right. When when he started helping us, that's when my dad started winning races and like when my dad built his new mini stop back then in uh ninety ninety nine I think it was. Yeah. Or no, 97, 97 is when it was. He ended up winning the championship. He built that car. The first race came up here. He broke track record back then. Yeah, sure. And it was a 1591. Yeah. And then he set it on pole. He ended up winning that first race. And then, so that would have been at the end of 96. In 97, he came and won the championship at here, Frank King Speedway. Yep. And he won the championship at Victory Stadium also. Oh, okay. Victory My Stadium. My dad was was a driving dude. He oh, really yeah. was. I remember. He used to go through the grass at at uh, Victory Stadium. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, yep. He would pass cars through the grass. Yep. And he, him and uh, Steve Lamb would race side by side. Yeah. On that track. And uh, the 90. Who was that? Gary the Joyce. Gary, Gary Joyce. Joyce. Yes. Man. He yeah. was another one. He was a, a legend in mini stock. Like, there's been some amazing mini stock drivers. Yeah. You know, over the years that come from here. Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. You know, the mini stocks, we talked about it evolving. You know, it's, it's a whole different beast today. And, I mean, it's yeah. headed... It's headed in a whole even another direction, you know, with the front wheel drive thing. You know, yep. we we had Barry Wilson win championship here in uh, twenty sixteen, I believe, in with a front wheel drive car, and I mean that was against you know all the good guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like you know there there's a continuing evolution of that division. You mentioned the tube mm-hmm. chassis car, yeah, um, and that's a lot of them today are tube chassis cars. I mean, you yeah. still got some fast. Um, you know, cars that aren't tube chassis, yeah. you know. Yeah, there is. It's just they're easier to fix and they're getting harder to find, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So well, like that's why that's the way the junk yards. Yeah. Not like they used to be. Used no. to you could go get anything you needed. Now they're yeah. becoming hard to find stuff. Yeah. So And it, you know, talking to some of these guys, I don't remember specific parts, but I guess some of the engine parts are even oh, becoming yes. harder to find yeah. uh, things that they need that are required by the rule book that you, yeah. you know, it, it, so, you know, you got a whole nother, you got a whole nother evolution that, mm-hmm. in that direction that may come yeah. from the necessity of, of you know, I not think, having parts available. I think we end up seeing two rear wheel drive 
mini stocks, right? With like Honda motors in them. Yeah. yeah. Because there is some that's been built now. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. And they're super fast. Yeah. Man, I'd love to see a division of. Oh my K24 god! K24 motors built all to hell. Oh my god! Yes, <laughs> they would be getting it. Yeah. Oh, they would for sure. For yeah. Sure. I mean, you know, we had the other day uh, one of the drivers that hadn't raced here this year. Uh, I seen he accused Scott Foley of having Honda rods and his and yeah. his motor. <laughs> I have to laugh. It's just funny, you know. Racers are so funny. You know, yeah. they don't even they ain't even out on the racetrack, but they got to accuse somebody else of cheating. So, yeah. you know, it's crazy, but. What, uh, you know, I ask you if you aspire to do anything else. Do you, do you see, your th- see yourself doing anything else, or do you see yourself just continuing to improve in the mini stocks the way they are right now? I'm going to end up getting a late model. Yeah. I, probably in the next few years. Yeah. But, like, I really want to just concentrate on mini stock for real. Yeah. yeah. Like, you go to Bay McGray, they got a ton of mini stocks there. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? You yeah. can see the cars that's around this area. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it, it, I think it's just going to grow because, like I say, how late model is so much more expensive. Yeah. You can build a, a front-running mini stock and, and spend a fraction of the price that you yeah. would on late model. And it's just as fun. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you see the drivers just drop down from, you know, bigger – Upper, upper divisions. Yeah, I mean, Dennis Holdren's a great example. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes, he was in many stocks he, before, but yeah. you know, he's moved back into the mini stocks. Yeah. He's a, I mean, he's an amazing driver. He yeah. really is. He's yeah. one of the best. But that, he's a perfect example, and I think that's where it's going to go to. And yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying he dropped down because of money or whatever. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's just fun. Well, I think you know that's I mean? why he dropped down was it's a lot more fun yeah. to be in the mini stocks yeah. than it was for him to ride around in that modified. Yeah. You know, when he was getting, while while Dennis may have some money, he was getting out money in the modifieds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. he's, he's not going to get out money more than likely in the mini stocks. No. You know? And it's, like, it's not like you can at really out money somebody in mini stock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you can only go so far. Yeah. So... There, I mean, you you don't have to look at it like, well, if somebody that has money comes to mini stock, then you know you ain't gonna have no chance. It, right. They can only go so far. Right. You know, if they go build a big motor, as soon as they tear it down, they're gonna be disqualified. So they're gonna have to make it right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, I I really feel like mini stock will be the big thing in the future. Yeah. I, I mean, I could see it being the top division. Yeah. At racetracks. I mean, I think yeah. it needs some uh, tweaking to the rules. It does. Um, just, to, just to square everything away and make it, make it yeah. easier and better. Um, but those are hard to do. You mm-hmm. know, anytime you change the rules, it changes the dynamics for somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It does. Um, but, I, but I think it, it, it definitely needs it. I don't know exactly what it needs or I'd already done it. Yeah. Um, but but I, I love the mini stocks, and I could see them being top division. I mean, that's... Late models are, are slowly phasing themselves out. Yeah. You know, and that's not just here. That's everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, $150,000, 120, $150,000 race cars. I don't know about you, but I can't buy one. So You look at Tanner Young started, you know, racing mini stock. Yeah. He, he's an amazing driver. Yeah. Period. And he moved up, and he's winning races in that modified. Now he's got a late model or a sportsman or something. Yeah. You know, like, and then – uh. Daniel Hudson, he's yeah. a driving dude. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. Like, we've, we've had some really good drivers. Oh, yeah. Racing mini stock. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I, I think it, they'll end up phasing back the mini stock later on in the future. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. I, I mean, yeah. I, I've told people this for 20 some years. Not, this is not necessarily mini stock related, but I feel like we're, we're heading down a path where. A three-eighths mile track, right today, it's considered a bull ring, and it's small. In yeah. the future, I think racetracks that are built going forward It'll need be to be smaller. quarter mile or yeah. smaller, fifth mile you yeah. know, racetracks. And I'm, that's, that's where I think racing is eventually headed. Yeah. And this right here will be a super speedway for, for <laughs> short track racing, yeah. which is crazy to think. This is a fast track, though. Oh, it is. Wow. Very intimidating. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think that's one of the things that keeps you know, car counts 
at bay at times here is is this place is very challenging and very you know it's not smooth yeah. you know it's 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 rough and it's fast and man things happen in a blink of an eye yeah and i think that keeps people away at times you know i think that's that's one of the that's one of the struggles so i tell you what josh he he's gotten it figured out over the you know the past yeah, year Phillips. yeah yep yep He's come a long he, way since yes. uh, I remember he made his debut with us, I think, 2016 uh, Thanksgiving race. I think he made his debut then, and yeah. he's come a long way since then. Yeah. he's He's been doing really good. Like, that's what I say. Like, I, any driver that you talk about for real, nine cars this past week, the last race, could have won. Oh, yeah. On, on any given day, you know, like, yeah. the right circumstances. Yeah, sure. So... It's not like there's just one guy that wins or something yeah. like that, you know. Really, it's Scott should have won the last race if his motor didn't mess up. Yeah. So the only reason why Dennis says, you know, won like two races, I think, was because somebody had a uh, oh, he's had multiple failure. That yeah, West broke so, that one race. Uh, yeah. the leaders Josh Phillips and Stonewall got together that one race. Yeah, so I by mean, he's fallen and, into something. yeah, it's no telling who would have won that between Josh and Stonewall. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like. It, it's just things happen, and he's been in the right place. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm not saying that you know anything bad about him. Dennis is a oh, hell he'll of tell a you driver. He's falling into him. It's a lot. Yeah, but it, it's not like he's just coming here dominating. Is no. what I'm trying to say. No. So for sure, for sure. Noah, you got you got anything else for for David here? Yeah, I want to uh, turn it back a little bit. I don't mean to harp on or anything, but <laughs> 2019, you know. Obviously, the first time you came back from the last time you were here, you got to be a completely different person. With yeah, what's it like on race day, twenty nineteen? You're pulling up the hill. What's that? What's that feeling like when you're finally getting back? I was so excited, but I was also like felt like I was gonna puke. Yeah, yeah, you know, my nerves. I was like, oh my god, what if I've lost it? You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> Like I, I was just worrying a whole lot, but yeah. man, once that once that green flag dropped, I, it's like right everything back. just came back. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, yeah. it, you know, being especially being away for five years. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, from something that you've you've done your entire life. I mean, we talked about yeah. going back, you know, thirty some years just bike yeah. racing. I mean, that's you know, that's a long five years is a long time to be away from something. It is that that you uh, that you enjoy. Yeah. It, it, I feel like it has affected my driving a little bit just because I'm not as an aggressive driver, but yeah. I don't feel like that's a bad thing. Yeah. You know, because I really haven't torn my car up. Right. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Fi- financially, I'm sure it's been. <laughs> yeah. Better. Now, if it gets to the point that where I'm fighting for the win or something like that, you know, I'm going to be aggressive. Yeah. But if I'm racing for a fifth or fourth or whatever, you know, and somebody's faster, I'm gonna let them go. Yeah. That why am I gonna tear both? Yeah. Difference. Why am I gonna tear both our cars up? You're yeah. you're definitely faster. For sure. For sure. Well, so, hope, hopefully we'll get uh, hopefully we'll get to race this weekend, the Buster Carroll Memorial Race. Got yeah. uh, another 25 lap mini stock uh, on the docket for for this weekend. As I mentioned earlier, you know, of course, uh, Hurricane Debbie <laughs> gonna gonna uh, been been tearing it up as she's made her way up through uh, Florida there. I seen a uh, picture of I ninety five and it was completely <laughs> underwater and oh my so it's God. been uh, been wild. It's supposed to uh, supposed to dump I don't know five or six inches of rain over a couple of day period here. So. I saw a video of Cletus McFarland. He put his uh, yeah. he yeah, put his boat, boat on the drag strip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah his, his racetrack's next door to the drag strip, and that's uh, that's pretty cool. It was pretty funny, I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Making I mean, the best out of what you got. One hundred percent. I mean, that's what you got to do for sure, for sure. You, uh, we got the the playoffs getting ready to start for the uh, for the points. Uh, you'll you'll be in the playoffs. You've yep. uh, you've run most uh, most uh, most if not all the races this yeah. year. Um, you feel like you can get that next step. What you got to do to get a win to get get it further along in that? I I feel like we're really close. But if I had to predict it, I would say Scott's going to win. You think Scott's going to be the champion? I mean, he's definitely the driver. 
You yeah, know, he just he's got the car. Together. He's had bad luck. He's a terrible he's a luck. Terrible. Man. Yes, his luck is <laughs> terrible luck. His luck is the only bad thing he has going. Yeah, I, I, and I, he came uh, and practiced Sunday, and I don't. They've, he, that's he did not a, seem very happy when he was leaving. They've been putting the work in. Oh, 100 percent. That's what I say. Like you've got to put that work in. And yeah. Scott's a prime example. Yeah. Like that's why he's you know is doing as good as he is. Yeah, for, for real. Sure. For sure, and he's got some good people around him too. He's mm-hmm. had John Hall and them helping him, and yep. and his dad David has been you know right there by his side the whole time. And mm-hmm. I think that uh, that helps a lot. You got to have good people. You mentioned Daryl Dalton. You got to have good people yeah. around you, man. Yeah, I got uh, Daryl Dalton. He's my engine man, and then I got uh, Travis Covey with TC Construction. Yeah, he jumped on board this summer, and I, I mean it, he got me a set of tires. Yeah, and clearly it was what I needed. Yeah, you know, tires make a big difference in that. Yes, day. it does. Lord, it does for sure. For sure, that's what but one, one small little thing can slow your car down. Six hundred and thirty-four dollars, yeah, so though, is a lot of money. Yeah. How, mu- how much was it? Six hundred and thirty-four dollars. Tire yeah. prices are insane. Which, of course, everything's yeah. insane. I mean, you can't. I mean, listen, I had to change insurance companies today because <laughs> my wife told me what to. She said, "Yeah, I got to go put some money in the bank," and she told me the amount. And I said, "The hell you are!" I said, "We ain't paying that. I'll go without insurance." <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> uh, I had to switch insurance company today because the price of everything's insane. Yeah, it is. I yeah. mean, Bidenomics. I guess I don't know. I don't know how all yeah. that works. Yeah. I'm not real political, but I, I don't yeah, know. that seems to be the. Uh, Seems to be the thing. So, yeah. anyways, I guess uh, I guess we'll we'll uh, we'll get out of here. Have we, have we asked you everything that that you thought we were going to ask you? Was there anything any topics we left out? No, I don't think. Okay, well, good. We appreciate you coming yeah. on and uh, and sitting with us. It's been a been a great conversation, and I think people will uh, will enjoy this and take a lot away from from this conversation. Yeah. And uh, real quick, just another. Uh, Throw out the Daryl Dalton, yep. Travis Covey, my fiance, Kana Morris, my son, my mom and dad. You know, that's that's everyone that stands behind me. Yeah. You know, so you, I just want to thank all people. of them for real. Yep. 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 That's awesome. Noah, you think we're going to get this race in this weekend? Are you going to come out here and, and help us uh, drain drain the water from, you know, the rain on Thursday and Friday? What we, the hell you got to get you No, we got to listen, we got to get you in your speedo. We're going to take <laughs> a video live stream you out there just trying to clear the drain and everything. Uh, are we going to turn the donations on? Yeah. <laughs> listen, I think people yeah. will donate to that yeah. cause. Yeah, I right get there. the money though. Ah, listen. You can have ten percent. Listen, I'm a businessman. I'm getting at least eighty percent. Okay, uh, fine. I'll just come down here and stream it on my Facebook. Well, that's okay. Like that. You won't make as much money that way, so nah, that's okay. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm whatever. good. With it. The twenty percent for me would have been way better nope. than the hundred percent you get. I mean, I'm just saying. It. Just saying. All right, guys, that'll do it for this episode of the Pit Chatter Podcast. Hopefully, we'll see you this weekend for the Buster Carroll Memorial. But if not, we'll be back next next Wednesday with another episode of this show. See ya. Bing bong.